Here we go again. And secondly, why the government is justified in using force in these cases. Um, so what the member of government basically brought us is also that prevention is a sh whole lot better than cure. And that we're saving a whole lot of lives in the process. Um, before I get to my arguments, I'm going to do some points of independent rebuttal. Now, firstly, OG went and showed us that, um, that truth that's being lost um, as we lose journalists. That we lose, as we're losing journalists, we're losing truth. Now, and that journalists have absolutely no safety. But these journalists go in there, they go into these war zones, they get danger pay, they are fully aware of what's going on, and they are fully aware of the risks and the, um, all, all the ideas, the, all, all of the problems that they could face going into these countries. But they feel that the financial benefit um, outweighs their risk to their lives. Okay, now opening opposition came and they brought us the following. They said that local news can report. Now, if you're telling me that international news will be subjective. Now, how subjective will local news be? Because obviously what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to portray my country that's good to invest in. I'm going to try to make my country put, put it in as best a light as possible and give this image to the rest of the world. Now, on the idea that there will be floods of unqualified journalists. Now, just if you look at the policy and the how you go and you uh, become a journalist in a different country, you have to get a visa, you need permission from the other government. And I think that this is a big misconception throughout this entire debate is that we got individuals that only focused on um, a 1970s kind of version of, of the world where governments fight against governments. In modern society, the, we don't have governments fighting against governments. We, to a large extent, have terrorism and we have individuals and we have sex that are going and they're uh, penetrating other governments. This is war. This is, how, this is the status quo. Now, People are being killed by spec ops. Now, on that point, just of these big wars that you're speaking about and all these big issues and uh, all these millions of people that are being killed that's going to be documented. Now, if we send in a task force and those people kill, let's say, five or six people compared to the giant war that's going on there, I don't think that that's much of a threat compared to the giant war that's happening currently. Okay, now, on the member of opposition. Um, will journalists increase our knowledge? Yes, journalists do increase our knowledge. If we didn't have these journalists in, our, in these countries, we wouldn't know what's going on there. Um, okay, so why don't we use the police? In, why don't we send the police to another country? Because firstly, as stated in opening op in closing op uh, case, they said the police showed their unskillness in the Marikana mine. So now we want to send these unqualified police individuals that are supposed to protect individuals within a local sphere into another, uh, into another country. That makes no sense. Now, okay, enemies perceiving a military force as a threat. Now, we're ready to kind of discuss this. Okay, now, why we can't use the UN? Because the UN is a peacekeeping force. They do not save people. It's not their job to protect individuals. Their job is just to make sure that while the war is happening, they see that everything is happening on a fair basis, and they go and they check that all the individuals, that basic human rights are still being upheld. That's the job of the UN. Um, also, innocent citizens suffering. Yes, innocent citizens are suffering because of terrorism and because of these wars. That's going to happen. Uh, Wait. Uh, yes, I'll accept your question. If you send in a task force and they um, see a person maybe as a terrorist and shoot them, then innocent people will suffer as well. Okay. Now, if you look at how a task force works, a task force doesn't go, oh gee, now we're going to go run around and we're going to look for these journalists. No. It'll be specified. There'll be information that will be dropped into a place. They'll go, they'll go get the journalist and they'll chuck out. Okay. So, why the truth is important. Now, OGs come here and they brought us that losing the truth because we have a right to it. They're on and they focus mostly on because we have a right to know the truth. And also, um, OG made out as if the enemy is mostly, and in most cases, another country, which we see these days is not the case. Um, so, if we don't learn from our problems, 
we tend to make them again. And we do not want constant reoccurring wars, as my member of opposition of government brought. Uh, it's very clear that what's happening here is that these terrorist sects, what's happening is they're just calling, causing more backfall and more economic detriment to these countries that are trying to develop. And we don't want that to happen. We want to prevent these wars from happening in the first place because how, how do you prevent these wars? What, what stops this? The international community goes and makes sure that the, uh, these individual countries um, will be able to develop. And, um, but we are stopping these wars and we're stopping up these uprisings from happening. Well, now, because as soon as, uh, I'm going to continue with this argument, as soon as I'm done, I'll accept my final point. Uh, because what we see is, is as soon as something, as soon as these terrorist groups are starting to develop, the first thing that they target is journalists, external journalists and local journalists. Because as soon as you take away these, um, you, the first thing that they do is they take away the communication from these, from these countries to other places. So, uh, journalists are big targets to these terror groups. And, we want these third world countries to grow and we see that that's not going to happen as much if these journalists are not going to be able there. Uh, yes, Chris, I'll accept my second and final point. Okay, so basically if you're saying journalists report and then there will be peace because now we see what's going on in these countries. But if they are caught, let's blow up that fucking country because uh, they have one of our journalists. Okay, okay. Now, I think you misunderstood the motion because what we're saying is we're sending in a tactical military force. We're not going to blow up the country. You're going to go and it's opening government went and they stated they're going to use a small tactical force if you listen to where they stated the motion or when they said what, um, what they're going to call it. Um, it's, they went and they explicitly went and stated that they're going to send in small groups of individuals to protect and to save these journalists. They're not going to send an entire strike force and blow up the country. Okay, so why is the government justified in using force in these cases? And why is military forces needed? So, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Now, OG, once again, OG made others as the enemies of another country, but that's not the case. We're facing terrorism here. We're facing, we're not living in the 1970s. A country is protecting its citizens from other organized entities or countries. Now, these people use force. If you look at the way that terrorist groups work, they go and they bomb, they create terror, they destroy buildings, they, they don't negotiate. They are largely individual sects of, indivi of people that are there to terrorize other countries, and terrorize other people. So how can you negotiate with someone like that? They are hostile, they do not negotiate. Unless you want to, um, yeah, you can't. So it's the only way to say that people is forced. 